welcome back students to one more session of your general organic chemistry that is effects of hyperconjugation now today we'll be learning the hyperconjugation effects very clearly taking different examples so i'll be teaching you the effects of hyperconjugation under different headings so please keep noting hope the concept of hyperconjugation is clear in the previous video any doubts please send it in the comment section so hyperconjugation i can use it in learning means you know the concept of bond length we will see how we can learn this i will also use means this concept of hyperconjugation <coughs> in explaining the dipole moment done i'll be explaining the concept of hyperconjugation in stability of carbonium ions carbonium ions right then i'll be teaching you how can we study uh, this uh, hyperconjugation concept in stability of free radicals also right so stability of free radicals right i will be teaching you the concept of uh, this an orientation influence of methyl group also orientation influence in methyl group or of methyl group of methyl group that right under this headings right so well, let's start with the first one and see bond length we said so like resonance you know hyperconjugation also affects the bond length by and how we will see so like the uh, first one let's write the heading bond length okay fine so here what happens bond length you know, the presence of single bond in the compound in, in see we, we talk about single bond length we talk about double bond character right right so like resonance hyperconjugation also affects bond lengths because during the process the single bond in a compound acquires some double bond because when there is a shift double bond character and again double bond will become single bond correct yes or no right so because of this hyperconjugation there's a shift isn't it let me take an example so <coughs> carbon hydrogen one more hydrogen okay this is single bond after that carbon double bond ch2 now when there is a shift of hydrogen see due to hyperconjugation what will happen this is going to shift here okay this will sh this bond will shift here and this bond will shift here yes, sir no. this is hyperconjugation now what happens here initially this double bond whatever is there it is the bond length is 1.353 angstroms here the single bond length is 1.488 angstroms okay done so no bond resonance we said okay I mean, resonance we are denoted by this so when the shift of the bond this looks like c this becomes h plus this becomes h this becomes double bond because this bond has shifted ch single bond and this bond ch2 minus so now what happens this single bond whatever is there okay so example since the bond length in group is 1.488 first of all it is 1.488 and compared uh, as compared to 1.33 in ethylene let me see so again this bond length is 1.353 angstroms and this bond length is 1.488 angstroms so this is how your concept of bond length means the concept of hyperconjugation is used in bond length now we will see how can we explain the stability of carbonium ions so next effect is stability of carbonium ions right so i'm going to use hyperconjugation concept in this so the order of stability of carbonium ions remember tertiary carbonium ion is greater than secondary greater than primary remember this how can i explain this is hyperconjugation right so remember greater the number of hydrogen atoms means attached to carbon atom means alpha hydrogen more are the hyperconjugated structures once again greater the number of alpha hydrogens what will be there the more hyper conjugative structures of hyper conjugative structures are formed correct structures are 
found. This is understood. Done? Now, let's see. He said tertiary greater than secondary greater than primary. Now, in tertiary, when I take tertiary carbonium ion, carbonium ion, just see. This tertiary carbonium ion, this is CH3, C, CH3, this is CH3. Now, there is hydrogen here, correct? So, how many do we have? 1, so 3, 6, 9. 9 equal in form second form in this correct in tertiary because this is tertiary tertiary carbonium ion so how many 9 equivalent form second form equivalent forms so how does this look if i write ch3 c c double bond ch2 h plus no bond and ch3 see here like this i form no like that you will form for this one Again, two more. Again, for this three more. This is again three more. Nine equivalent forms. Suppose if I take secondary carbocation or secondary carbonium ion. Let us write that. Secondary carbonium ion. In secondary carbonium ion, see here. CH3, C. So CH3, this is H. This is secondary because two alkyl groups. So how many alpha hydrogens? Three. And three, six. Correct. So, how many forms can form? Six equivalent forms can form. Equivalent forms. Three plus three, six. How does this look? This becomes CH3. One double bond because there will be shift one of one hydrogen. This becomes CH2, H plus, and H like that. These two hydrogens will shift. Then these three hydrogens also will shift. Let's write for primary carbonium ion now. Primary carbonium ion. Okay. So now in primary carbonium ion, what is primary carbon with one hydrogen, two hydrogens, and one alkyl group is primary. So this is primary carbonium ion. How many hydrogens? Three hydrogens. So how many forms is it called? It can forms three equivalent forms. Three equivalent hyperconjugation forms it forms. So how does this look? This looks like hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen, double bond, CH2, H plus. Right? So this is how it looks. And again, after this, two more hydrogen. That's why I have written three equivalent hydrogens. Three equivalent forms. This is how we have explained the stability of carbonium ion, tertiary, greater than secondary, and primary, because there are nine equivalent forms, right? So now next one how am i explaining the stability of free radicals using hyperconjugation concept stability of free radicals right fine so how am i explaining this the stability of free radicals uh, can be explained as a reference same like carbonium ions how tertiary free radical will have greater stability than secondary free radical this is greater stability than primary free radical, greater stability than methyl free radical. Okay, right? So, understand this. The same concept, but here we are speaking about free radicals. Now, let's see how can we uh, use the concept of hyperconjugation in explaining orientation influence of methyl group. Right? So, let us write that. Next one. Orientation influence of methyl group okay right we did see now the o op directing group orientation means how which are the directing ortho directing or para directing right not meta ortho and para so the ortho para directing influence methyl groups are always op directing means ortho para directing group isn't it so in methyl benzene We'll take methyl as an example and it is partly due to inductive effect and partly due to hyperconjugation Okay, so I said orientation influence of methyl group. Here, when I take this example, what is this? This is methyl benzene, right? Or toluene. Here, we are going to see two important concepts. What? Here, I'm going to explain based on inductive effect. So, I'll be explaining in terms of inductive effect, electron releasing, and I'll be explaining in terms of partly in terms of 
hyper conjugation also hyper conjugation also okay hyper conjugation effect inductive effect that so orientation influence of methyl group due to plus i effect first and then comes due to hyper conjugation both we will see right. let me turn the page and come back first i'm going to take this ch3 it is right c hydrogen hydrogen here and hydrogen right in step one i said both effects are seen inductive effect as well as hyper conjugation effect yes now just observe carefully in the first case carbon now this bond is there right that bond is going to shift here this bond will shift here this becomes double bond so this becomes carbon hydrogen and h plus see i am showing hyper conjugation right now this bond from here because double and double can't be here this bond is going to shift at this point so this becomes negative this and this is here in the next step let us write c double bond c hydrogen is here hydrogen is here h plus is here this bond shifts here and this charge shifts in this direction so this becomes double this becomes negative this becomes in the next step what happens this bond is going to shift here and this bond will shift here so well, this is minus double bond carbon hydrogen hydrogen and h plus correct fine so what are we seeing we are explaining the concept of hyper conjugation here and as at the same time we are showing plus i effect of the methyl group yes done so this is how the hyper conjugation explains the methyl group so the role of hyper conjugation in ortho and para directing uh, groups means that is like methyl group it, uh, it can be also explained as a part of you know nitrogen that also is there so the, these are the effects of uh, uh, hyper conjugation I mean, not the effects if i have to say applications of hyper conjugation concept so remember the whatever hyper conjugation in some cases when there are nitro groups so hyper conjugation o powers inductive effect right when substitution takes place you know so there the concept of hyper conjugation o powering of inductive effect also is there i'll explain that also as an example thanks for watching students let's come back and meet with the next concept that is metamerism in my next video